Hi, I'm David and uh, I'm from Halo Print and Frame. I'm a picture framing business based here in Stratford-upon-Avon. And I've come in this afternoon to Permajet just to help show a demonstration on how we produce a canvas. And the process of that will be varnishing the canvas to protect the canvas and then stretching the canvas onto a stretcher bar. Right, so we'll start with the varnishing of the canvas. Um, for this, we're going to use some Perma Protect. Um, in this instance, we're going to use satin. We could use gloss or matte, um, but satin, we're doing a photo on canvas, so for me personally, I prefer the satin finish. So we've produced the canvas, we've printed on a Permajet P4 canvas. It's a really nice canvas, it handles the print very well and takes a varnish. The varnish protects the canvas and also prevents the corners or the edges of the canvas from cracking when we stretch that around the, uh, the stretcher bar, which is all important. So with our print, we've produced this print and it's been drying for about two or three hours now, which in most cases is about okay before we varnish. If your atmosphere environment is very cold, you may just wait a little bit longer. The ink may take a little bit longer to dry. So all we need to do is take some Perma Protect using a roller, just load up the roller nice and evenly, and with a very light touch to start off with, just roll, trying to keep it in one direction. You can actually, on the first coat, you can load up your roller quite heavy. Um, it actually helps. But forwards and backwards, just try and give a nice clear coat. On the first varnished layer, the canvas will really soak that varnish in, really dries into the, the canvas itself. So I usually then rotate the canvas by 90 degrees and we'll just go over it in the other direction. And that really helps to spread the varnish evenly. What we're trying to avoid is any roller marks. Um, so a light firm pressure generally tends to be best. And use your eyes, look to see that you've got a nice even coating. Um, if you've got any dry spots, just again rotate the canvas, go over it in the other direction and really just keep an eye out for any dry areas. But that simply gives us a really nice coverage on the first coat. Uh, about 20 to 30 minutes and that will dry off certainly sufficiently enough to put a second coat on there. And when you come to the second coat, you really don't need to ro load your roller so heavily. Um, the first coat is going to protect and seal the canvas. The second coat is just to give it that extra second protective layer. So much less varnish on the roller at that stage. Then once you've put the second coat on, for me personally, I generally tend to leave it for about 30 minutes to an hour in ordinary temperatures. Um, that'll give it plenty of time to dry, but it will also keep the canvas quite flexible for when you start to stretch it. And then we'll move on to the stretching stage next. So the canvas was, so canvas has had two coats of varnish. That's been dry for, a, this, in this case, about an hour or so. So touch dry, certainly. There's no risk of any of that varnish catching. And what we need to do now is flip that over and take our stretcher frame. So in this case, I'm using a made stretcher frame. It's a 30 mil deep profiled stretcher bar. Uh, being a picture framer, I've cut this from length. Uh, some people may prefer to use pre-sized bars using corner wedges or sometimes other clever fittings. But for me, I tend to make my frames to any particular size. Just that's how we work being a picture framer. So I've made the frame to a size that allows us to wrap the image all the way around the sides. I'll just line this up. 
so that when the canvas is finished, the print detail finishes to the edge of the stretcher frame itself. Some people may prefer to have a white edge, and that is simply a case of just sizing your stretcher frame to your canvas to suit which preference. With a photographic canvas print, personally I find that the edge detail being printed always works well. So the process of stretching, we've got a nice rigid frame. There's no way that frame's going to buckle or pull in when we're stretching. So that'll give us a really taut canvas when we're finished. From the back here, I'm just lifting the canvas to make sure that, that the printed detail just rolls over the back of the stretcher frame. We certainly don't want to see any of this white edge appearing on the side. Once we're happy with that, we're going to use some canvas pliers. Canvas pliers comes in lots of different sizes and grades. Uh, these are quite some old ones with quite a, sh a narrow jaw face. Uh, these are my day-to-day -day canvas pliers, really nice wide gripping face and a nice lever bar on there which you'll see in a bit. Uh, I generally tend to say stay away from the cheap nasty ones on online shops. They're just not very good. Um, process then is to start on the long length. First of all, I'm going to use the grip of my hands to put tension into the canvas. Take my staple gun and just three staples along that edge. You might find that if you're working on a particularly tall work surface, the staples might just sit a little bit proud, so you might just need to hammer those home. Once I've got those three in the center, always lift and turn, never slide your canvas on your work surface. There might be some debris underneath and you'll just risk scratching the coating. Then, again, making sure there's no white edge showing. Take my canvas pliers, these really then allow me to get lots of tension into the canvas, so it's putting tension in this direction. So three there, and then a lift and rotate, and we'll just put a couple of more, a couple of staples on this side, again with the canvas pliers. This lever bar here works really well in that it just grabs underneath the profile of the stretcher and really allows us to put tension into that. So only two staples on this length because we're working with a shorter length of bar. Now, in this instance, the canvas is a little bit long here. So I can just take some good sharp scissors and just take some of that away. And again, you'll see just a little bit of movement in the canvas as we put that tension in. At this stage, if you've got a poor coating, you will see some bad, you might see some bad cracking here, but the P4 gives us a really nice finish and uh, prevents that cracking. So with those first edges stapled, we're starting to get some nice tension in our canvas. And what we're looking for is really the, the tension of a, say, a, like a taut drum, get a nice bounce on the surface of the canvas. I then move to the shorter sides again. And now I'm just stapling all the way up into the corners. And again, always lift and rotate, never slide. When the image is wrapped over the, the side of the profile, what you can see is the alignment of the image with the edge of the stretcher bar. And if you've got an image that has a lot of linear detail, it can be quite important to make sure that you don't stretch the canvas offset. So using this print edge, in reference to the edge of the stretcher bar helps you keep the alignment as straight as possible.
and again we're starting to get some really good tension in there. Now the corner folds, the bit that sort of catches everybody out. And it's probably fair to say that people have different ways of doing this. Um, this is my preferred way. I generally like to have the folds top and bottom because they're the least seen edges. If you have the folds at the side, if you think about how you view a canvas in the room, you are more likely to see those folds at the side rather than the top. So first off, I'm just taking a little bit of the canvas away and we're just going to fold that in, tuck it over and fold down like so. We do see this pronounced fold here. Some people like to leave that in place um, and sometimes we'll take, just cut away some of that bulk. So again, tuck that in, try and keep that nice and tight. Come over. When I start to put the tension in there, we simply see just slightly less of a bulk in the corner. So now I'm going to staple from the centre all the way out here. Again, trying to keep this printed edge in line with the stretcher bar will become slightly more difficult in the corner because of this bulk. But you can, with those good plies, you can really get some good tension there. Every now and again, just fold it over. Make sure you're not getting any buckling. And then we'll move to the opposite corner. Again, I just take a little bit of weight out of the canvas there. And to repeat that fold, we're going to tuck in and then fold over like so. And you can kind of press down on there so you get a little bit of memory set into the canvas and that gives you a nice guide in which to cut through. What you can also do at this stage is take the surplus canvas out of that edge there. So back with the pliers, keep that tension on. Like so. So along that edge, we've still got good tension in the canvas. It's all sitting nice and square. And then just a case of repeating on those top two edges. At this stage, I can just trim out some spare canvas there. Another chance to see that fold, tuck it in. Start forming that memory there. And then cut away some of the bulk. So because we're now working on the last edge to be stapled, this is where we can really start putting some extra tension into the canvas. And then our last corner. So you can see once you've got your technique, it's really pretty straightforward. It's just a case of working progressively around all four sides, not twisting, not sliding the canvas on the desk, just always being conscious of keeping it as safe as possible. Take some weight out, take some of that surplus out there. stapled all the way round and that's where it gives us that really nice taut tension. 
So over time, that, there's no reason why that canvas should go saggy. It's got good tension now. It's a really strong stretcher frame. Um, so there should be zero movement on that throughout. Nicely protected uh, to a stage where you can be quite aggressive with the coating. Uh, and it just holds, just stays in really good condition. So that's our finished canvas. If you want to finish the back of the canvas, we consider finishing the back of the canvas for no other reason than making the finished job look smart. It serves no purpose other than that of making a really nice finish to the job. So I've just cut away any surplus canvas. And then I'm gonna use some Tessa backing tape for this. It's quite an expensive tape, but it's very flexible and has really good adhesion to it. And I'm just looking to seal over the staples. And the tape is wide enough that that can just fold and tuck underneath, which will help keep the tape stuck. But it does make a difference to the back. It always looks a more professional finish when taped rather than left untaped. So it really hasn't taken very long to stretch that. It's a pretty simple process. It's all about using the right tools and following those simple principles. Uh, there's a variety of hangers we can use on the back. Some people will put a cord across and some people use just a simple hanging system. That's everybody's preference, anybody's preference. So that's our finished canvas. We've got a really nice taut finish, excellent quality uh, and a great end result. Brilliant for gifts, for production work, um, for artists to reproduce their paintings with. Just canvas is so flexible, great material to work with, stunning results. So with this canvas here, obviously we used a pre-made stretcher frame. Uh, a new product that Permajet are bringing out soon is the SureFit uh, pre-cut stretcher bars. Um, really nice thick section bars, so great for getting a taut canvas without any deflection in the stretcher bar. We've got a 30 mil depth profile with a tapered face, uh, which is ideal when stretching good canvases. We don't want to see a flat face on a stretcher bar. If you stretch a canvas around a flat surface profile, you will see the outline of that stretcher bar long term through the canvas, and it's really not good. So the sure fit bars, nice heavyweight sections, and they have pre-routed into the corner uh, some simple little slots that are gonna take these clever little plastic wedges. So actually setting up the stretcher frame really is as easy as trying to keep hold of one of these little fellas. They are tight fitting for a very good reason, but we can drive one into the corner And then a second. Like so. And we get a really nice corner fit. It's the first time I've ever done that. And it's really quite simple. So really nice secure corner. We could have applied some PVA glue to that corner before doing that to give it extra long-term support. So really actually very quite simple. Just get that wedge into the corner. So it is a tight fit and that's a good thing. We want those fittings to be tight. And then as you can imagine, two more will complete the frame. So really simple. 
just a great alternative. Um, being a picture framer, I've got a mighty guillotine, uh, an underpinner, and I can make any stretcher frame size that I want. Um, not everybody wants that level of equipment, so pre-cut bars, really good quality bars, are a great option. So just a little side note there.